This sculptural fire sphere depicts the importance of biodiversity. It is five feet in diameter and three eighths of an inch thick. It includes carvings of 45 endangered creatures and flora from around the planet, from fungi to trees to entire ecological systems. A graph from an academic paper shows the relationship between population growth and the loss of biodiversity. The sphere also includes a reference to one environmental activist, Julia Butterfly Hill. Also animal constellations, the sun, and a human couple on a shelf inside complete the picture. Observers can play a vibraphone octave or anywhere they would like on the sphere using attached mallets. The fire sphere is mounted on a steel triangular chariot atop four steel wheels. The chariot is 16 feet long and 6 feet wide, including its sun is 10 feet tall. The deck of the chariot is wood and holds a wood-topped equipment chest at the wide end, which doubles as a bench, and at the wooden table at the narrow end is handy for observers and drinks. Each wheel is uniquely cut. One is a threatened snake. Another has human footprints. Another has seven endangered animal prints. The final wheel includes the classifications for all living things from domain to species. I am Shane Shane. This is Endless Prospect of Life and Wonder, the Biodiversity Fire Sphere. As we know, all life begins with the sun. And here, it's shining down on a sky island like that of the Chihuahuan Desert in North America. And at 10,000 feet, we have the conifer trees and the starts of rivers. Here we have the oak trees as the rivers get larger. And we come down and we have mushrooms and orchids. And the rivers are even larger now and they form into lakes and waterfalls and fish spawning grounds. We have bees and flowers everywhere as we come down from 4,000 feet, 3,000 feet, all the way down to the ocean as fish migrate upstream. Now here offshore we have sea anemones and corals in the reefs, which provide lots of life and food for our biodiversity. And here's an endangered starfish feeding at the bottom of a kelp garden. And in the kelp garden we have sea urchins. And the sea urchins get eaten by the sea otters, and they are there to protect the gardens for all the other species who feed there such as this threatened octopus. And as we go up, we see frogs. They're amphibians. They live terrestrially as well as aquatically and are the first type of species to be affected by pollution. And this graph represents 176 countries. It's a McKee Atel 2013. The higher we go and to the right is a lot of population and not much biodiversity. Down here at the bottom, we have very little population and a lot of biodiversity. And this is a regression line. And here it states that 26% of all the species that went extinct went that way directly because of human interaction, like a ship running into a reef. So the higher you go, the less biodiversity you have. And the farther to the right you go, you have overpopulation and eventual death. And as we rise, extinction is the future. And here we have a beautiful albatross bird flying away from a storm. And this storm cloud, you can also play for the rain is an octave vibraphone. And here we have an endangered seahorse grasping onto the kelp garden. Here is a pink river dolphin designed by Alyssa, our 11-year-old neighbor, and was the first species cut on this fire sphere. And here we all recognize a beautiful sea turtle about to eat an endangered jellyfish. We go down to the bottom of the kelp garden once again, and we see a beautiful shrimp laying eggs for the future. And 
now. It's a frilled lizard trying to scare you away or quite possibly wanting to mate. And as we go up, we go up the trunk of an endangered baboa tree from Africa. And this tree you can play like you can the rain cloud. And at the top of this tree is an endangered butterfly. And it says, Julia Hill. This lady chained herself to a sequoia tree for 280 days to keep it from getting cut down. And an owl just landing on a branch. And as we go down, we see an African mother elephant taking care, care of her baby. And a scared beetle on the jungle floor. And here we have a beautiful mother rhino with an embryo inside. As we go up, we see the parachute web of a peacock tarantula, which is really only about a quarter inch big. Climbs through the top of the grass and cuts her web and flies off into the wind. And here's a giant African centipede. Very important, but dinner for a lot of people. And here we'll see a silverback gorilla and a mother gorilla, a lowland, with her baby on her back. And here a chimpanzee swinging through the branches while a reticulated giraffe eats the leaves from the lower branches. you see it, the tiger generally always sees you. And here we have a sperm has found its egg. And here a bat eating an insect and pollinating flowers. The footprints of a polar bear looking for prey at the North Pole. And here a humpback whale migrates north blowing water out its spout. And here's constellation Taurus, an homage to all the bull animals that have been killed before their time. And as we move over, we see constellation Scorpio, an endangered scorpion. They're scary, but necessary. And here an infinity symbol, the continuance of life. And Ursa Major, an homage to the bears, those that are gone. And here a wolf howling at the moon, letting its pack know where it is. All life begins with the sun. Let's take a look inside.
billboard sign say everything's gonna be just fine keep on rolling east to the rising sun find a place make a stand far away from the promised land cross the rio grande when the day is done in the golden west Oh. 